Okay. Well, let's uh, let's revisit September nineteenth, nineteen ninety eight. Husky Stadium in Seattle, 71,000 plus on hand. Wildcats are 3-0. and Huskies are, are 2-0. and uh, I mean, outstanding football game, kind of back and forth. And uh, I know we got late into the fourth quarter there, and Washington was up 28-24. And I think the, the key was that uh, the Huskies had missed a field goal on their previous possession. And so you guys take over at your own 20 yard line, first and 10, 252 to go. You're down by four. So if you're going to win the game, you got to score a, a touchdown and uh, kind of take us through that drive. Uh, first of all, what were your thoughts? Maybe what went on in the, the sideline huddle there before Coach Tommy sent the offense out there needing 80 yards to, to take the lead? Uh, well, I think the, the number one thing is that we, we knew we had a chance. That was number one um, by them missing that field. I think Peter Hansen was like our kind of specialty field goal blocker guy and kind of made the kicker kind of, you know, alter his kick a little bit. A lot of people don't know about that, but um, we used Peter because he was like 6'8 or whatever, 6'7, six, 6'8 six, to be able to kind of to throw the kickers off. Um, but I just remember, you know, we we – we knew we had a chance. We knew we had, you know, we were in hostile territory and uh, it was just make the next play and we would figure out, we'll work our way down the field and see what happens. Uh, I mean, you had a, a great core of teammates, Dennis Northcutt, Brandon Nash, Mike Lucky, Keith Smith, uh, yourself all made big plays on that drive. Uh, was there one other, and before we get to the touchdown, was there a play in particular on that drive that really stands out to you? Um, I think, a couple plays, uh, two plays prior to um, when Keith threw me a pass, I came in and Keith came in and I ran out um, as a wide receiver. And then Keith completed like a, like a 14 yard pass or something like that to me. Uh, and then there was a, like a vertical route to Brandon Nash. That was like a seam route down the middle of the field coming as we were marching down. Um, but if you go back and watch that drive, I mean, I think it was like three or four third down conversions in that drive that we converted on. Um, and I always tell people this all the time, you know, there's so many people that were involved in that drive being, you know, end up being one of the, you know, one of the good plays or great plays in, in the history of our school. But those linemen blocked their tails off. They don't ever get no credit for it. Gave us the, the time and opportunity to go out and make plays. Um, uh just all the way across the board. Those are there are a lot of un, un, you know, unsung heroes, the guys that did their job to give the skill position guys a chance to make plays. So I always like to give those guys credit to that offensive line with Bruce Wiggins and those guys. They, they gave us a, they really fought and gave us an opportunity to, to make plays. Absolutely. You, you and Keith Smith had a great relationship both on and off the field and uh, when you went to, to split out there on the play when he threw you the pass, and and you guys had, of course, worked together before. The Huskies had seen both of you on film before. Did you see the look in, in any, any of their eyes like, well, what's going on here? here? Here's OJ out, split as a wide receiver. But it was more like them thinking of me as a decoy, I think, more so than actually that he would actually throw me the ball. And we practiced it, you know, throughout. You know, we practiced it multiple weeks of doing that. And um, – but um, – I, I don't think they, I think they were more surprised that he actually threw the ball to me more so sure. than me just coming out being a decoy to get somebody else. So, you know, one of the other hidden elements of that drive there, you, you guys had a couple penalties called against you, a false start and a delay a game. And to overcome those uh, along with the 80 yards, uh, w w you know, tell us about how the, the kind of those things went through your mind. You know, it's, it's when you, when you're, when the adrenaline is going and you're playing, you know, you have those, it, it, you, you have those plays, the false starts or the delay of games. And it's, it's just those kind of plays that, you know, they, they kind of nip you in the butt, but we were so, I was so just anticipating the next play. It was like, okay, we got a penalty. Let's just get to the next play. Um, because the adrenaline the, was so, my adrenaline was so high that the moment was so big to be in that stadium you know, I don't think we won there in like years or some crazy times since the last time we had won up there in Washington. So, you know, everything is, your, your heart's pumping, your adrenaline is up. So, you know, it, it was more like, let's just get to the next play. It's not the last play. We got another play. So since we have another play, let's, let's, let's move on and see what the next play brings us. 
All right. So you get down to the Washington nine yard line. Uh, you're, you, you had one timeout. I should mention that you used yep. during that drive. Uh, Coach Tomey, I think, was quoted as is saying, "OJ, you can't take a sack." <laughs> I mean, that's right. That, that, that's right. one thing. But uh, as you lined up for that that final play, kind of the make or break play, uh, take us through the call, what you were looking for initially, and then how it unfolded. Let's see how many Huskies come dogging the cat from Arizona. Just the four. Jenkins steps up. He goes. He dies. He's in. That was one of the most phenomenal plays you'll see in college football. Well, it, it was a three receiver set. I had Trung in the backfield. Lucky was on the field. I had Dennis Narka. So realistically, at the time, Dennis was my playmaker. Um, so you're going to always try to give your playmakers an opportunity to make a play. Um, but as I took the snap, I looked over. They were kind of he was kind of double team. Trung was kind of out in the flat, which was it wasn't going to even if I had dumped it off to him, I don't think he would have been able to get to the end zone. Um, and more so it was, it was about making sure that we take a shot to the end zone or, and, and don't get sacked. You can't get sacked. There's no more timeouts and you got to take a shot in the end zone. And ironically people, you know, as I explained this, I've explained this to people year after year after year, people talking about it still is it was weird, man. I dropped back and then I, and I took a long drop. Realistically, uh, the, the drop was more further back than. Really, I'm supposed, I'm supposed to catch the ball, take three steps back, and then plant my feet and make a make a throw or make a read where I'm going. But I kept drifting back, and it just like opened up, man. It was crazy. I, I it's hard to explain like how I just looked and I was like, I can make that. Is what my thought process was. I was like, I can get to that end zone. And then you know, I took off. And when I got up to a Lester Towns, I'll never forget. He's a big linebacker, big old, big helmet. I just remember he always had this big, giant helmet. And I was like, well, I know I can't run Lester Towns over. I can't go underneath him. There's only one way else we can go. So let's just try to be an athlete, and we're going to jump and see what happens. And I remember jumping, and I'll never forget this, to, the, to take this to my grave. I remember seeing the field goal pole because the two field goal poles, you're running straight down the middle, right? So I jumped, I seen the field goal pole, my body becomes parallel, I see the black stars in the sky, and then I see the field goal pole again. And when I see the field goal pole, I'm, again, I'm in the end zone at this time. So it was one of the craziest moments. You were like, man, what did you, how did it go? I said, field goal pole, stars, because it was black, it was dark at night, field goal pole, end zone. And it was, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know exactly where I was, but I know that the guy that hit me catapulted me and pretty much gave me a little boost uh, to, to get my momentum going to, into the end zone. So when you initially took that dive, when you were running, you saw the end zone, et cetera, you were going to leap into the air. Was your intention to go head first into the end zone? My intention was to jump over whoever was coming underneath me is what it was. Cause my thing, my, it was more so I knew that I had, I knew there, there could not be a, any, the only play, that I had a chance. The only thing that I could that I could have a chance to make a play was in the air, because if you go to the ground, you're down when you touch the ground in college football. You know, even if nobody touches you, it doesn't matter. You're down. So, I knew the only the only choice I had was to go airborne and then hope hope for the best. So yeah, I didn't think I was gonna flip. I'm not gonna sit up here and say yeah, I thought I was gonna flip because I didn't. But I thought I would just be able to jump over them or leap over them into the end zone. So when you landed, did you instantly know that you'd made oh, it into the end zone? I knew. I knew. <laughs> I knew. As soon as I, I knew. As soon as I, as soon as I touched, as soon as I came across, I said, oh, I'm in. And then and then I got attacked by the team. And, and the in the stadium of that 71,000 was quiet as I don't know what. It was, it was it was it was an amazing feeling. All you hear is all the cheers from all of the that small little Arizona fan that they give us that little corner over there you hear them going crazy and then everything else is silent but I knew I knew as soon as I left when I got up it was over how many times have you watched that video that last play any idea in the lifetime I think it was 20 years ago 98 2008 18 more than 20 years ago wow it's crazy 22 years ago I don't know probably about five five hundred five thousand times <laughs> I don't know I've seen it a lot I've seen it a lot um, you know, people bring it to my attention a lot more. So I don't sit back and watch it like that, but 
people bring it to my attention because there's been over the last 20 plus years, there's been multiple flips uh, in collegiate and pro sports. Um, and there's guys that have had better flips than mine. But I also remember a couple of years after the flip, you know, uh, I think it was uh, Steven Spielberg came out with the movie uh, uh, Any Given Sunday starring Jamie Foxx. And they literally did the same exact play, literally right the exact same way that it happened. They did the exact same thing uh, with that movie Any Given Sunday. So I remember watching that um, and I was like, OK, they, they, they took that from us. They took that from from from, from the Arizona <laughs> days. So but I've seen it. I've seen it multiple times. Sorry okay. to drift off. No, that's quite all right. Hey, so let's look back at your entire football career. I mean, from Sandlot, whenever you started, uh, had you ever had a play, anything like that? Never. It's the greatest football play I've ever had in my, in my whole career. Because what a lot of people understand is, too, is that, you know, I didn't play the whole game. Me and Keeper going back and forth. It was a dog fight game. Um, uh, there was... I've never had anything experienced anything like like that in my whole football career. And, you know, it, you know, it catapulted us into the national limelight for our school. Uh, it was great for football. It was great for Arizona's great for Tucson at the time. Um, and I, and I've never, I've never experienced nothing like that. I mean, when I got back to school, it was like the craziest thing. I, I mean, people were, they were clapping when I got to study to the classroom and the, in the, in one of our lecture halls, I mean, it was it was crazy. It was a it was a it was a great experience, man. I'll never forget that. Well, it was a special play in a special season, the greatest yeah. in Arizona history at twelve and one. And, and I know there were many more plays that made that season special, but but why was it? What, what was there an ingredient that made nineteen ninety eight so good for Arizona football? You know, it was, it was, it was, it was coach told me, you know, rest in peace. It was, you know, his, he had us all bought in to, you know, the dual quarterback thing, number one, you know, because you got two leaders in the locker room and it's a, na it's natural for young men to side, you know, I like the way he play a little bit better than OJ or vice versa. So um, he had everybody bought in on, one team you know one goal and because of that that's what i believe made everybody go out there and fight so hard for each other on the on, you know and not including the fact that we just had just some talented players <laughs> chris McAllister, trent Kennedy, jeremy mcdaniel uh dennis northcutt and we had some big time fighters on that offensive line and defense you know we had we had some really tough football players in the trenches and pe those guys, they never get the credit. But the reason why that team was so special and the team the next year that we thought was going to be special wasn't as special is because we lost a lot of those tough, hard-nosed football players that are in the trenches. So the reason why I believe it was special was it was, it was the coach. It was Coach Tompkins. It was his it's, – it's, it's what he demanded from his football team for the guys to, to not be about me but to be about the team. And which made guys go out there and and literally, you know, fight to the death for their for their teammate. OJ, I got to ask you one more question about that season, sure. and that was the Holiday Bowl win over Nebraska. Yeah. Uh, to take on a traditional program like that, uh, and then to win the game in the the manner that you guys won it, uh, there probably couldn't be a better way to to end a great season like that, but maybe just briefly talk about going to San Diego, number one, playing Nebraska and then beating them the way you did. Yeah. You know, I got a funny, not a funny story, but it's just a true story. When we got to San Diego, when you go to those bowl games, you got to do everything with the other team. You, you got to go to dinner with them. You got to go to SeaWorld with them. You got to go to the zoo with them. You got to go to the introductory, uh, you know, you know this dinner this ball this so when we first got to san diego we went on the aircraft carrier because lou holtz was there doing a doing a he was a, a speaker a guest speaker and you you could see the look on the nebraska players faces as we got off the bus they were massive guys way bigger than us and they were talking and and just 
talking so much stuff and smack all week long. But they, what they didn't realize is that we was fast. You know what I mean? And, and yeah. we had a lot of fast players on the team. We had three, pretty much three or four NFL players on that, on that, on that one team. Maybe even more. Not a thing, man. Antonio Pierce, Lucky, Mike Lucky, Brandon Malamaluna, Dennis Northcutt, Chris McAllister. I mean, it, that that there, there's a lot of good football players on that team. You go back and if you go back and look at some of the careers that came out of that. And I just remember those guys just talking mess the whole week about, you know, because because we weren't the biggest, we weren't the biggest, you know, looking team. And they were. And I just remember getting on the field and we was just running circles around. We was fast. We were fa- and we were fast, disciplined, good, well coached football team. You don't go eleven and one for nothing. You know, I tell people we were one game away from going. We were one game away from going to the national championship game, and we we're and we we're UCLA's one game away from going to the Rose Bowl. I yeah. mean, if you if in you know college football, that's just that's the beauty of it. But it hurt us. It hurt us that year. But if you think about it. If you go, if you if you put us in the College World Series now, we might have made that four. You just never know, you know, mm-hmm. with with a different dynamic of the game. So yeah, I just remember going there playing them. They were a tough football team. They were physical. Don't get me wrong, you know, because you know there's Nebraska, you know, big time program. Like they they had Crouch at the time. I think he won the Heisman the year after or something like that. Or and um and but I just remember like we just you know stuck to our guns and we played we played fast and we played hard. And it was just a little bit too much for him at the time. 